Welcome to Dependable Flame, where we explore vintage petrol lighters, ashtrays, tobacchiana, and other useful mechanisms. Make yourself at home. Today we have a vintage Dunhill small roller light petrol lighter. It is diagonally ribbed. I believe originally it was gold toned and some of that gold tone has worn off but we'll talk about that later. Shows plenty of scuffs, dings, dents, wear, scratches, plating loss, corrosion. It's got a little bit of everything. So you can see the scratches, dings, dents. There are dents or wear marks in the sides of the rib design. I don't know if that was caused by something else that was carried or the inner working of the lighter as it has been used and worn. I think that is probably the case what it feels like so while it does have plenty of wear and you can see the brass fill screw which I did polish the outside of it a little bit small roller light is a little bit of a stretch for my decrepit hands but managed to pull it off anyway really cool old lighters and I will buy them every chance I get for the right price you might keep in mind if you plan on using it how small the small roller light is and that it is going to be a little bit difficult to gain purchase with one hand and actuate the roller but not impossible and for most people probably not even difficult but if you have bad hands like I do then something to consider I really like the design and the lid seems to close nice and tight and fit pretty snugly and fairly flush on all sides well, I did polish the outside of that just so it would match rather than looking like dirty brass it matched the bottom of the lighter it has the spare flint container which was caked with flint and I soaked it in 30 percent vinegar to get that cleaned out so nice and clean the gasket was stuck to it and was destroyed at one point while I was cleaning the lighter. I know that really bothers some people. But if you can fuel your lighter, the way that you're supposed to fuel it anyway is that you fill it up and you shake out any excess. That cotton or rayon whatever is inside of there this lighter is going to light but you can see my hand is not getting wet because the cotton holds it if you fuel the lighter properly you don't necessarily need a gasket on your fill screw 
I would contend that most often it is unnecessary. If you fuel it properly, and a lot of lighters just flat won't work if you overfuel them, they're not going to want to light properly. It blows the sparks out the top of the wick. So lighting or filling your lighter properly, I believe, is way more important than whether or not you have a gasket on the bottom of your lighter. Fuel's not leaking out of there and obviously lighter works just fine. So I get those questions all the time here on the channel and please keep asking all your questions. And I do have some of those gaskets if some of you want to email. Some of you have and I just haven't responded yet. Um, but I do have some of those for the Ronson lighters and I'll look and see what I'm going to use or not and what I need to sell and I may have some of those I can send to some of you. So as I said, please don't don't feel bad for asking the question. But I just want to share my two cents there as far as the gaskets go. I think they're largely unnecessary. The bottom of this lighter also is what, and my eyes just aren't that good, we'll see how it looks on the video. That looks like gold tone with sort of the ribs being maybe silver toned, hard to say. But the bottom, it looks to me like it all looks silverish except for up here. So it looks to me as if the gold tone plating, and I don't know if that was gold plating or just some gold tone process of some sort, but it looks to me like it is worn off. But I could be wrong. That could be brass underneath the silver. My eyes aren't that good, but that lighter looks goldish to me. I'm not exactly sure about the year. When you look up Dunhill lighters on the Volker Putts Museum website. He has six small roller lights listed and he doesn't have this particular model. I don't believe he had this particular model in the full size either. But he had them all listed as circa 1940. make sure that you get over to the website dependableflame.com they're at the current ebay listings page i've been jettisoning the old listings and archiving them to individual branded lighter pages so tell me what you think about that how functional it is if it looks like that's going to be okay to search around what I want to still allow access to all those photos and videos without bogging down that page I had about 75 listings on that page and only about 30 of them were active so I'm trying to speed that page up a little bit while still allowing access to all those photos and videos so like I said let me know how that goes and I mentioned the Volker Putz Museum website a while ago. I will go ahead and link to that on my page at dependableflame.com slash helpful lighter related links. Make sure that you get over there and check that out. There are several Dunhill experts out there when you hang around on the Facebook lighter group pages. Ira Polosoff knows a lot about all the kind of lighters it seems like. A guy named Paul Taylor and Michael Wink. Some other guys are experts on Dunhill. But I believe Volker Putz is probably the foremost expert 
when it comes to Dunhill lighters. So make sure that you get over there and check that out. Until next time.